Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. G'day guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg and today we are in the theatre, not doing any pickups today. Today's going to be a quiet, intimate video, just you and me today in the theatre and checking out two cocktail machines. We need to talk about them. So uh, we're definitely going to cover that today guys, but there's something else that has happened in the theatre which is pretty big and... <laughs> it started, oh by the way, my my week has just been so flat out, I don't know about you, if you've had a good week, if it's been relaxing for you, but for me it has been full on, and uh, and it's been, look, it's been like that actually for a little while, I mean I've said I've had some good weeks and I have, but it's just been one thing after the other, especially in the theatre here, and I'm sort of getting to the stage where I just really want a lot of this stuff and I think I've, I've said I know I've said this so many times I want a lot of this stuff in here just done ready to play and so that this place can be enjoyed for the gaming um for the for the classic gaming that should be played in here right and and I've you know even with my own kids I've wanted them to come in and play and I've had stuff lying around here and so all of this has been building up inside me guys <laughs> And uh, it was quite funny, the end of last week, I mean, after we got the grand champion here, you know, I um, I was done. <laughs> I was really done. I thought, wow, what more, how much more can I get in here? And I really can't, you know, get much more in here. And, well, I can't really can't get anything more in here, guys, without really sacrificing the space terribly. So I really thought, okay, this, this is it. And... Um, and that week I thought about it and I thought, you know what, I really, I've been spending so much time in the, in, in the, in the theatre trying to get the arcade sorted out. I thought, I need to spend some time with my, uh, with my family, <laughs> with my wife and kids. And uh, I don't think I've seen them for a while. <laughs> I've been buried in this theatre doing stuff nearly every weekend. And that was the plan. <laughs> that, was, that seriously was the plan. And going into Friday, like Friday night, um, I was, you know, I was in the theatre here and I was looking around, guys, and I was, you know, we, we got the Grand Champion in, sure. We moved these other machines out next to the, the jukebox and I just, just wasn't happy, actually, with, I mean, you know, I planned that for quite a while. I knew that would fit there and it did fit there, you know, everything fit in okay. And it was pretty cool having all the gaming machines together on one side of the theatre, but a lot of the times, you know, when I come in here, um, I will be watching like other YouTube videos and, and, and stuff on the big screen. And suddenly I was sort of stuck behind these two machines in a corner, in a dark corner, <laughs> even even though the, uh, the the projector could easily project over there past the machines. Luckily I calculated all that out, that was all sweet. I still felt like I was sort of sitting in a box and and also I couldn't really see the whole, you know, just the rest of the theatre, the whole arcade to enjoy, you know, what I've got in here. Um, unless I'm actually actively playing the games. And I just, you know, I looked at it and I just thought, nah, something's got to change. And um, so <laughs> I thought, oh, brainwave, sudden brainwave. And, and, and seriously, guys, in my mind, I'm just going through calculating. So this goes here, that goes there, this moves here, that moves here, you know, what, what do I need to do? Now, if you recall, several videos ago, I did have a, 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 a sort of thought process of moving the theatre around and having um, uh, all the games, you know, the key games like Championship Sprint and stuff, they were moved to the far wall where the projector screen was. And then in the end of the day, and so sorry, actually it was on the other wall and I didn't actually like it because, um, no, hang on, what am I talking about? Yeah, so the projector screen was going to be on the side wall and the, the main games were going to be on the end wall. And I, and I did do it that way, but when I walked in, it was against the yellow back wall where the projector screen um, uh, projects onto it. I really didn't like the look of it. And so I, um, <clears throat> I changed it back. You know, I ended up changing it back that time. But when I re-looked at it again, I thought, you know, that 
that will work that setup will work but i have to do something with that yellow wall it has to be painted this was all on the friday night guys so you, you can you, you know what's happening here right <laughs> my, my brain is like mm, painting uh, if i just paint that wall then maybe i could move all the arcade games there and it would look sweet so Sure enough, Saturday morning, I was down at Buddings. I was picking up some uh, some pretty flash paint, actually, some paint that's got some sort of like a, a um, chrome effect to it. And uh, you, so you apply it on and you swish it different ways and it sort of reflects the light differently and stuff. It's really for a feature wall. And I thought this would be perfect. So yeah, I spent the whole of Saturday moving everything away. And of course there's so much stuff in here, like just moving around to get that wall free and then cleaning the wall and getting it all masked off and painting guys. Again, just a mission. You know, the whole of Saturday it took to, to paint it and I was absolutely knackered. Then the Sunday I was then rearranging everything back to how I wanted it and I got there guys I got there and I'm 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 over the moon now how this has actually turned out so before we get into the tale of two cocktails I want to show you what's happened to this room so let's take a look There you go guys what do you think it looks pretty good eh? it looks really really good i am really really happy now with the screen on the side wall it's just the right size now you know it's actually a lot smaller than it was when it was on that other big uh, you know on the back wall before projector was so much further away i had to move that projector of course um, but it's actually better. It's, it's, it's one of those things, I mean, I've always learned that with projector screens, you shouldn't blow them up too big. 
Um, they start, A, when you blow them up big, you lose a lot of the, the brightness, so you start losing contrast and so forth. And it, by the way, it never looks good here because I've got to put a bit of light on for the camera, so you always sort of see it a bit grey. But when you actually get these lights off in here and just have the natural ambience of the arcade, this now looks super, super nice. I mean, it re you could sit back and it actually almost looks like a, an LCD on, on the wall. It's that, that cool. And by the way, Electric Sheep is going on in the background here, guys. <laughs> um, you can download that program. I mentioned it before on another, uh, another show. But also you can go to YouTube, and this is actually a YouTube video playing of a recording of Electric Sheep for three hours. So check it out because it's actually a really, really... Um, awesome thing to just stick on as a as a screensaver in the background so anyway yeah i was really happy with this it's all open now i can sit on the couch i can see all the machines i've got a you know great setup with the with the screen and and everything fits in here guys it's like um can't believe it <laughs> i just sat down thinking yep this is it so i I'm getting really close now, you know, I, I think if you think all the way back, you know, eight months ago when I was talking about um, the theatre and what my goals were in here, you know, part of it was to build the ultimate um, arcade. And of course, you know, what my ultimate arcade is, is going to be different to, to your ultimate arcade, sure, right? But hopefully, I think, you know, you've seen that, you know, with a lot of hard work <laughs> and effort in terms of you know picking up games and fixing them up and trying out different layouts and 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 you know playing around with lighting and stuff you really can create a, a really special space for yourself guys and you know and i think this this hobby remember is really accessible to anyone you know you don't have to be rich for this i think i've said every time I've talked about a game, I've said I got it for a bargain, and the reason why I got it for a bargain because I only buy games that are a bargain. <laughs> That's my rule, right? I will not overpay for a game. Um, you know, it's for some, for, for a couple of games here, I've spent maybe a little bit more than, you know, obviously than the normal game because they're you know, either rare. Um, but even Space Invaders, you know, that, that I got that for a steal, really, for, for that particular game. Super Sprint, yeah, you know, I paid a bit for that, but... Um, but you know, again, it was well under the, the the normal price for it, and everything else was was yeah was a really good good price. But I will say this, guys, you do have to be careful when you're picking up um, the cheaper games. You have to have a plan in your mind about what you're going to do with it, because if you're going to do a full restore, or if something's not working, and you pick it up, you know, like the chassis's not working on the monitor, or you've got to play, replace the marquee, or do some cabinet work, and it's all the parts, it's all the fixing up it's all the tools that are required to actually do all of that repair work and fixing up um, it's expensive that's where it starts actually adding up so just be aware of that even though you get the base machine for a bargain you've got to sort of really think through what is it going to take to get it to where you want to get it and you know sometimes that might be like the space invaders i know i'm not going to do anything to the exterior i want to keep it with that original patina so i don't have any costs associated to that um, but the the actual you know the board itself wasn't working so i knew that was going to be be a problem for me but anyway just some something to think about guys if you you get into this hobby um it, it you know it can be cheap to get in there if you and if you really stick to your guns and only buy really good bargains and guys there's things even this weekend even while i was doing all this um work in here you know i was still checking gum and stuff i still like to see what's out there and you know there was a guy giving away like um it was like four arcade tubes there was about six chassis there were two control panels fully populated with mca sticks um for free how about that, right? Just pick up free, first in, first served. And uh, and I did respond to that one and I just missed out. Um, there was one guy before me and if he hadn't have turned up, I would have been the next one in line. But it just goes to show you can, you can get those bargains, guys. So anyway, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about the two mystery cocktails and why, why have I got these two cocktail machines? So what happened? Well, I actually saw this machine here, this um, Frogger machine, <laughs> and also this other cocktail table. In fact, there was three cocktail cabinets. And 
And the funny thing is, is that I saw the name Roy and I thought, oh, I wonder if that's the Roy that, that we know from before. And that was the guy that I actually bought the championship sprint off. And I knew he actually collects cocktails. So I thought it was probably likely that it was gonna be him, um, given that there was three cocktails on sale from, from Roy all at once. Again, Roy was selling them off for, for cheap. I think he's got some really superb cocktails. And these were sort of some of the ones, you know, the the dregs, if you like. But, you know, I, I still, I, you know, I like a bargain, as you know, as, as I just said. And also, I, I also find the other thing of actually doing them up is really, really um, gratifying, you know, and actually being able to pull them back from the dead sort of thing. So, um, and try not to spend too much money in the process, like I just said. But... Something caught my eye with the, with the white one because that white top, that marble top, I recognised straight away. And guys, this is one of the things, like there'll be certain cabinets out there that you look for and that, might, that I might look for and there'll be things that you will find extremely valuable to yourself in terms of um, nostalgia. And this is definitely one for me. And, and, and in a way... That's the cool thing also about this hobby, guys, because you can end up picking up some real bargains of machines that sort of maybe no one else wants, but they're really special to you. Um, so that's a really cool thing. So anyway, I saw the, this, this machine, I saw the top, I saw this marble, sort of um, fake marble finish on the top, and I, and I knew, I knew that's the, that is the, the machine, that's how the top of the machine looked when I used to go play Space Invaders at those smokers board restaurants. So in Christchurch at the Rusley and at the Avon were two uh, smokers board restaurants that we used to go to as a family. And when I walked in there, you know, the nice decor of the restaurants, and I have spoken about this before, um, you know, one of these Space Invader machines with this beautiful sort of marble top sitting in that sort of setting, it just looked like an awesome piece of furniture. And, you know, I was draw I remember being so just so drawn to it. And of course, I was I was already playing Space Invaders and I played it at Cobb and Co and also at my dad's work. Um, and I saw this and it had a full color screen, guys. And it wasn't a cellophane color screen either. It was a full color screen, but it wasn't Space Invaders part two. So and of course, at the time, uh, none of this really meant much to me. But now that actually means quite a lot to me because all the original Space Invaders in terms of the colouring was all done through through cellophane uh, overlays until it got through to like the part two. Now in between there there was a couple of versions and there's you know <laughs> there's quite a few different versions of Space Invaders if you check it out on MAME. Um, but there's one that actually has like white um, invaders but at the bottom third it's all green. And doing a little bit of research um, I, and this and look, this is a bit of research after I, I bought this particular table because I really, I really went out there to really just grab this particular one, and it was the cheapest of the three. Um, but with that little bit of research, I, I found out that there was a company called Logitech, and without the H of today's Logitech, so obviously a different, completely different company, and they created effectively a bootleg of Space Invaders at the time. And when they released it, they released, and they did something special on the chips, so they sort of like fudged the colour. Um, so they, they did output to a colour monitor, but they did something, like they didn't do the typical RGB output. I, I, you know, there's very little information on this, but from what it sounds like, they sort of fudged it to get that bottom third to be green. And apparently that was, I believe, the first colour, actual colour version, as opposed to cellophane colour, uh, space Invaders, so that, that is, that's what's on the internet, so <laughs> I guess we, if you believe that, or there might be some other ones, there's so many bootlegs and stuff guys, the story could change, but I found that quite fascinating. So these guys were quite popular, I believe, back then in terms of the, their bootlegs were quite popular. And the other cool thing about them um, was that, and, and, and I think it, was, it seemed like there was like a relationship with Tato, and I don't know if they had like, it was a licensed bootleg, or, you know, and well, it wouldn't be a bootleg if it's licensed. There's so little information about that company and, and, uh, and the history of it, but the, the thing is, is that the glass, and this machine looks absolutely totally original, the glass actually has Tato on the glass, uh, but the machine itself actually has Logitech original 
um, stamping on it. So I don't know, it's just again, I find it really interesting the history of this stuff. So I, I believe, and you know, from doing lots and lots of searching guys on the net, the only other really white top tabletop uh, games are from Nintendo, and Nintendo released quite a lot of white top cocktails. And, but they weren't like this marble finish, they were a different sort of white top. Everything else is black, um, except for these Logitech, and that's as far as I can see. Um, a guy on Aussie Arcade, K Kazar, I think it is, K Kazan, Kazan. Um, he seems to have a lot of games that are the same sort of games I would like. Uh, he, he ended up picking up one, so when I was searching around, I actually found him, and he'd posted up pictures of his. And his one actually had a working Space Invaders board in it and it showed it in full color. Space Invaders one. So this was, so this had gone up from the black and white with the, with the color, uh, sorry, with the green third to full color Space Invaders one, not part two, which is the normal one with the full color. So I, immediately put those things together in my mind and thought well hang on that that means that pretty much had to be the cocktail machine the from the manufacturer with that color space invaders because it had to be part one back then because i you know part two hadn't been released when i was first playing it um and that intrigued me hey eh? it really really intrigued me so I immediately thought, right, this is going to be special. This is going to be a really, really special pickup. Now, when when I looked at it, it was it was in a bit of bad shape in terms of the monitor was like blown out. It was like fully white. It looked like it was the flyback was way up too high. But I thought, you know, it could have had monitor chassis issues. The colours were all off. Uh, it had a bootleg Frogger board in it called Frog. Um, so it didn't have the original Space Invaders board in there. Um, but other than that, it actually looked, you know, all complete. Um, and, and guys, this was all before I pieced together all that other history and stuff with Logitech. So I was still sort of just going on the fact of, hey, this is a Tato um, cocktail with that white top. That's what I thought originally. And then he had this other cocktail, and this is the other one that I've got here. And that one has just got this gorgeous screen and it was looked beautiful. Um, it looked so much better condition, like the whole cabinet. And I actually said to the Roy at the time, which is so dumb, and I'm glad he didn't do it. <laughs> so I said to him, oh, could we just swap the white you know, top with the other one? And of course that would have been a bad move because I would have actually ended up with you know mixing the the tops over and actually having the original logitech top on a on a tato what looks to be a tato cabinet i'm still not actually sure this other one that's got the pleads pcb in it i'm not sure exactly if that is a real tato machine or oh, that one's a whole mystery bag in itself but i haven't spent a lot of time investigating that because it was all about the white one so anyway what happened it got, why are my story so long <laughs> it's never it's never a simple story but um the funny thing was is that you know when i was looking at both of them and roy could see it in my in my in my face i was like oh i so want this one with the white top but this one's got the really good monitor I was like, ah, choices. And I could see him thinking, you're going to buy both of them, are you? And, I, and that was going through my mind. I'm like, I think we should buy both. <laughs> Can I buy both? Uh, so I ended up going off, getting some more cash. And um, yeah, again, no planning there. Completely uh, irrational uh, purchase on emotion alone. <laughs> but, but guys, get used to it because I tell you what, you see these cabinets and your emotions take over. You know, you're just like, I've got to get that machine because it means so much to you. So, so that's the story of this one, guys. And uh, and since then, luckily, I've managed to get the uh, the frogger or the frog. Uh, going and that was interesting in itself because look it really it was actually just the fly but I turned the fly back down and the screen came down and it looked actually really awesome so I was like well that's a bonus and such a good you know good um, good to have a fix that's so simple instead of you know having to get chassis fixed and all that sort of stuff which is what I thought I was in for so anyway the, the flyback sorted the screen out came down normal but then I, I had no blue 
and I knew it didn't have any sound. He did, Roy did actually say, look, it doesn't have sound either. So that's why it was really cheap. You know, screen looked rubbish, no sound. Anyway, so the screen came back good. There was no sound. I started playing with the sound pot, and as I played with the sound pot, the blue flicked back on, onto the screen. I thought, hang on, what's going on here? So I, was, I pushed a little bit on the PCB. Sure enough, the blue came back onto the monitor, and it looks superb. So I... Uh, I found out quickly enough that um, it was just the actual connector on the board was just half off on one end, can you believe that? So just where the RGB comes back out on, it's a Konami classic connector um, and yeah, it just wasn't getting connection through to, to the blue signal. Put it on, bang, monitors superb. <laughs> so that's actually turned out really good. Now I don't have sound, um, so I do need to sort that out if I want to get the Frogger board in there. But get this guys, this is just, I don't know, sometimes I, I think, you know, with the machines that I've got in here and the, and the ability to pick up the things that I've really, really wanted, you know, I, I think in some ways that it really is one of those things if you really go out and look for what you want, it will eventually find you because you're looking for it <laughs> you know that's the thing so you you know people say about setting your mind to something to to get what you want and i think there's a lot in that because you tend to change your actions and your approach and what things that you focus on you just tend to get the things that you want now look i mean the super sprint was just a pure fluke you know getting that at the same place of getting the space invaders i mean i couldn't have thought any harder to make that scenario happen but you know i think in all other circumstances if you you know if you really think through about what you know what you want it it will it will come to you so i um I started looking for the original Space Invaders board because I saw this one on our Aussie Arcade and of course this is a bootleg board from Logitech, it's really quite rare. I thought where, how am, I, where am I going to find this, you know, I did some searches, there's only a few references to that particular version of Space Invaders, um, you know, other than the Aussie Arcade pictures I found one other and I couldn't find it again, it was somewhere in the UK and they didn't actually say what machine it was but it was a picture of this Logitech cabinet um, but other than that guys there's nothing there's nothing out there uh, on it and I thought wow what are my chances of getting it getting the original board so I actually reached out to the Aussie Arcade guy about the ROM set that he had because I said you know I checked MAME in MAME that Logi the Logitech MAME driver um, is the one with the uh, the black and white effectively with the green lower third so it's not like that is actually the color one but there is actually a main space invaders driver called um, space invaders uh, in brackets cv color version perhaps uh, but if you play that one that is full color space invaders one uh, and that's like a bootleg so um, that I thought that could very well be it and I thought well okay well worst comes to worst I could you know put a jam of pie in here and um, and play it on the on the jam of pie um, but I thought you know it would be really so cool if I could actually find the original original board um, <clears throat> and anyway to play it on jam of pie with MAME I'd have to have the MAME driver in there now I did reach out to the Aussie arcade guy he did say that he would dump the ROMs and and, uh, and maybe get it sent off to the MAME team. So I thought, oh, well, that's pretty cool. In the interim, I just searched and searched and searched, and I found a guy in Perth, unbelievably, um, who is part of the MAME team. He dumps boards. He's got hundreds of boards. Um, and he dumps boards, and for the good of the MAME community, he puts them up and spends his time doing that. He's a retired guy, and he spends his time um, doing that, I guess some other things as well. but. He, you know, he dedicates his free time to do that. Oh, I think it's pretty amicable, someone, you know, doing that for the community. And to help pay his way, he also resells the boards that he's dumped. So he ends up having these lists of boards and boards and boards and boards um, on all sorts of different states and conditions that he's dumped. And going through this list, and, and he's, as I said, I, I think he's got, what? He'd easily have like three, 300 boards, I reckon, PCP. So it's going through the list, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't hopeful. And sure enough, I come down, it's several Space Invaders actually. 
um, and, and a lot of them, a lot of the midway ones not working. Um, he did um, he did have one midway working, and um, guess who picked that one up? And that's for the the upright. So we'll talk about that another day. But as I was going down, there was another Space Invaders, and it had Logitech in brackets. And I thought, no, seriously, <laughs> what's the what's the chances? What is the chances of someone in Perth having the exact board, a bootleg Space Invaders board? But then I thought, well, it's even rarer if I'm going to find this color version because. It seems like you know the main driver is 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 not the color one. The CV is, but that's actually got Tato on the actual um, the the screen name. It doesn't actually say Logitech. Um, so I, which again is unusual in itself, because that means that was an original Tato release before Part Two came out. Maybe it was some some weird ROM in between. I don't know. It's just it's like my story and all this guys about the whole you know evolution of Space Invaders and all these. Uh, bootlegs but anyway so I did actually ask him you know I just said listen is, do you think this is the same one I gave him the pictures of the Aussie Arcade guys one he got back to me and he said guess what it's a match the board that that guy's got on Aussie Arcade is exactly the same it's got exactly the same markings and also it has what seems to be an additional slot for the color prom um, which is really, it's like a daughter card that actually sits on there apparently, which is apparently the same as the Aussie Arcade one. I haven't got the board yet, so I don't really know um, what he's talking about there. And initially he didn't have that board. He said, I've got the boards, it looks the same, but I don't seem to have the colour bit. And I thought, oh, well then it's just going to be the black and white version, maybe, with, you know, with the green bit at the bottom. So it's <laughs> really intriguing. And uh, anyway, he got back to me and he said, I've actually found this little board. I think it's the one. It's the only thing that fits. So I, I think that's it. Um, and I, I don't believe he could actually actually run it up. But anyway, I ended up doing a deal and uh, he's um, he sold it to me. So there you go. So I've, I've managed to, to pick it up. Now, he's he's still going to spend some time dumping it because he actually, because he's part of the MAME team, he will actually dump it and get it up on MAME. So it will be there as a driver as well. And so I have actually, uh, uh, he did ask and said, is it okay to hang on to the board? I said, sure, you know, do what you need to do uh, for the main project. And uh, when you're ready, just fire it around. Um, in the interim, I've got Frog <laughs> or Frogger uh, loaded on here. And of course, oh, the kids love Frogger. I love Frogger as well. I sit here and play it even with the sound off. It's awesome. Um, but it's going to be so cool getting that original Space Invaders PCB. Uh, even... Even if I even if I don't actually install it initially, you know, just to have it and know that this is the complete machine. This is the cocktail. You know, this is the one that I used to play. Um, I'm gonna be be so so happy. So guys, yeah, that's the long-winded story around the Frogger. You've seen Frogger so many times. I'm not, I'm, I don't have to sit here and, and play it for you. Um, Pleads is an interesting game on the other cocktail. It's not a. It's not really a, one of the classics for me, and I, I just don't think it was actually available around at the time. Um, but I think it uses Phoenix hardware. It seems to be very similar in graphics and style. It's actually a pretty cool game. I actually really quite like it. But I'm, I'm unsure what I'm going to do with this one. Again, I'm not. I don't know if it's a really a genuine Tato cab. I mean, it's a complete. It's not a you know local a. It's not a recent reproduction. It's definitely one from you know 20, 30 years back. There's just no markings on it, and the wood is like really, really good condition. And it sort of seems like it might have been re reconditioned at some point. It doesn't have this Tato stamps on it that the, the genuine ones have. Although again, I've seen a lot of genuine Tato ones that don't have the, the Tato stamp, and there's a lot of variations with the. The, uh, the tops and the, um, the different corners, um, you know, covering the glass. And oh, seriously, guys, when you get down, you, you think these cocktails are quite simple, especially these Tato ones. You know, they look really similar. You just go, that's a Tato, that's a Tato, that's a Tato. Well, in actual fact, they're not. <laughs> so you do have to look very, very carefully. You have to look at markings. You have to look inside, see if you can find any of their original 
information about what the cabinet is. But even then, um, it's you know it's 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 still a cool thing to pick up some of these bootlegs and some of these oddball type cabinets. All of that is part of the history. You know, if they're if they are the original article, they're still 30, 35 to 40 years old. You know, coming up to 40 years old, guys and. And, you know, I think it's worth saving, regardless if it's a bootleg or not. And, and in, in some ways, especially with his Logitech, it's got such a cool story around it that it's um, it's almost better than getting just a normal run-of-the-mill Tato Space Invaders, you know? So it's a little bit more special. So, anyway, guys, I hope you um, enjoyed that insight for the a tale of the two cocktails this uh, arcade area now is really, really coming together and I am so happy, especially now I've also moved the Grand Champion where it is now next to the other main box. That works out so super cool. And I want to finish off here to just show you a little perspective that I had. After I moved everything around here, I sat down on the couch and when I looked around at all these games, guys, I sat there and that little saying from Roundabouts, <laughs> one of our subscribers, Roundabouts, I think it was like Roundabout ST. I don't know if that's because he's got an Atari ST maybe. Uh, but anyway, and he, he said that comment about you're living the dream, my friend. And this was like eight months ago. And back then, you know, I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay here with the arcade and all the rest of it. But for the first time when I sat down on the couch and I looked around at everything that's in this in this room, and even though everything's not quite exactly how I want it and there's still lots to be done, I really did think for the first time, yes, I'm living the dream. I'm definitely living the dream in relation to having a like an arcade setup, you know, the things that I thought about as a little boy, thinking, you know, even that little, the, the cocktail Space Invaders, and I do remember thinking about that Space Invaders cocktail, thinking, wow, it would be so amazing to have my own cocktail machine in my own home, you know, knowing that that, you know, back then that would never have been possible. And now I look in front and there is that cocktail in front of me. You know, I look over around the room, I've got the championship sprint, I've got the super sprint. You know, I've got this cool cocktail, this cabinet, and okay, the pole position's playing up on me, but you know, to play pole position on that, I've got the original Space Invaders, Hyper Olympic, you know, the virtual pinball machine, and now the, you know, the Astro and the Sega Blast is so, so cool. And you know, even with Sega Rally and the original Atari APB cab, like all of that stuff, guys, and the jukebox, the ice cold beer, the other hand can cocktail machine, I mean, seriously. Um, as well as obviously the main box with, with everything in it. It's just, I, I really am grateful for, for, for this. And, and, you know, I don't think I'd want too much more. I mean, I know if I had the means and the space and all the rest of it, it'd be so cool to have like every classic game. I think you just would love to be able to do that. But I'm sort of getting to the point now where, you know, getting so many games currently that, you know, there's so much to do and fix and stuff. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm fixing games constantly and things are going down and I'm, you know, constantly chasing my tail. I don't mind improving things going forward, but I think if I was constantly doing that, I really feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Um, whereas now I really feel like I've got the basis, I've got the core games to live that dream. So, you know, I think, Guys, if you if you really have a passion for arcade stuff and arcade machines, go on this journey. You know, go on the journey that I did. It's been eight months for me. You know, eight months. It seems like maybe a long time, but it's not really. It goes pretty quickly, and I think I really have achieved a lot in here. I'm so glad that I've spent that time. So guys, there you go. Anyway, for another video, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, something a little bit different. Still lots more, even though I've, I, I've said that this is sort of it in terms of like the, the key games that I want in the theatre. There's more guys to come. There's definitely more to come in lots of different ways. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and carry on this journey with me. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff. And if you have got some games, remember to fix them up and play them and enjoy them. Enjoy them with your friends and all that good stuff. And uh, until next time, as you always know, ciao for now.
You must continue! You can do it! You are amazing! The theater is now closed.